tell you a little story. When I was in elementary school, eight or nine or ten years old, I was a safety. I don't know if they have those anymore. You would wear a white fluorescent belt over your shoulder, across your waist, so hopefully a car wouldn't hit you. I'd get up at 5.30 in the morning, it was completely dark outside, and I'd walk to one of the busiest quarter, corners in our neighborhood, and uh, I was assigned, as were other safeties, to help our fellow students cross the street, tell them when to stop, just to make sure they were safe. And um, so what began to happen, there was a group of four or five kids who would every day, every morning, harass me, make fun of me. I wasn't sure what to do. So I asked my father. My father was a very smart man. He was in many ways self-educated. Uh, he'd gone to college, but he, he read a lot. He had served in World War II. He was a very strong man and street savvy. And he said, pick out the leader of the pack and hit him as hard as you possibly can. Now, I'm not advising that for kids today because you probably wind up in federal prison. But I said, hit him as hard as I can. I'm a little nervous about that. I said, where should I hit him? He said, in the stomach. As hard as I can? He said, yes. And so a few days later, it happened again. And I thought about what my dad said. And I hit him as hard as I could in the stomach. And he went down to the ground crying like a baby. And the others, well, they kind of walked around me and they never bothered me again. I know we live in different times. I know what kids are told to do and what not to do. I know what would happen to me today in this environment. Why am I telling you all this? Because that has stuck with me now to the point where I'm 64 years old. Why? Well, in a strange way, when I look at Ukraine, this is how I see the Russians and how they're treating the Ukrainians. And then you see the pictures, the satellite pictures. Then you see the video. Then you see the photographs. What do you see? You see mass graves, faces covered up, first-hand stories of people being raped, earrings being pulled off their ears, then being hanged, people being decapitated, limbs being cut off, throats being slit, 15-year-old daughter and her mother raped simultaneously, people trying to flee, shot in the back, people with their hands tied and their, their legs tied, shot in the back of the head, a guy on a bicycle trying to get out, shot where he stood. You see piles and piles of dogs that are just slaughtered. And people who kill dogs, of course, will kill anything. You see all this. And these are the Russian troops. We're learning now it's the Wagner Group, which is like the SS. Chechnyan hit squads. They're all being unleashed on the citizens of Ukraine who've done nothing to provoke any of this. Not a damn thing. I am ashamed, ashamed at the response of our government. And 50 years from now, maybe 20 years from now, 100 years from now, people are going to look back and they're going to say, why didn't we do more? Why didn't we do more? And I'm asking you this question today. I am sick and tired of the Putin wing of the media, the Putin wing of the Republican Party, the Putin wing of the Democrat Party. I'm sick of all of them. They have been lying for weeks, if not months. I'm tired of the isolationists and those that say, what do you want to do, drag us into a war? Did they not see the pictures? There is a war going on. World War III has begun. The question is whether it can be contained where it's taking place right now, whether it'll spread to Eastern Europe, to NATO countries, whether it'll spread to the Pacific and Taiwan, whether it'll spread in the Middle East with Iran, given that this government, this regime is, is in the process of arming the Iranians with ICBMs 
tipped with nuclear weapons. These are grave times. Now is not the time to hide. Now is not the time to be quiet. Now is not the time to pretend that your ideology would keep us safe when it won't. We should be muscling up the United States military just in case. We should be muscling up NATO just in case. We should be arming the Taiwanese on the island of Formosa before they're attacked by the communist Chinese. Harpoon missiles and other weapons, heavy weapons, so they can defend themselves in their freedom. We should immediately stop negotiating with the, the terrorist regime in Tehran, ensuring that they're going to have nuclear missiles that can hit our cities, as well as hit anywhere in the Middle East and in Europe. Can you imagine when that happens, the state of affairs in the world? Of course, this all involves American national security. We can't pretend it doesn't. What do you think, they're going to leave us alone? That this isn't going to affect us economically? That this isn't going to affect us geopolitically and in every other way? Of course it is. Of course it is. When bullies see weakness, they attack. These genocidal mass murders in China, in Russia, in the Middle East, they see weakness in Putin. In response to these horrific, horrific photos, and the evidence is overwhelming, of genocide, Joe Biden can't even call it genocide. They're splitting legal hairs. Why? Because if you call it genocide, you have to do more than provide stingers and javelins. Maybe it's time finally, to give them the MiG-29s that they've been asking for and the tanks that they have been asking for so they have a fighting chance to actually defeat the Russians. Are they allowed to defeat the Russians? It doesn't appear that our government thinks so. These people want to fight. They're fighting for their lives. They're fighting for their freedom. It's a new democracy. It's imperfect, but it's new. And yet, look what's happening to them. Putin doesn't intend to stop with Ukraine. He's having a tough time, no question about it, but that's due to his incompetence, the incompetence of his military and the strength of the Ukrainian people. Quite frankly, the brilliance of their military leaders and their Churchillian president, Zelensky, whom the Putin wing and the various political parties and the media have been trying to trash to their great disgrace. What do you think Churchill would say about Zelensky? He'd say, that's my kind of guy. What do you think Ronald Reagan would say about Zelensky? That's my kind of guy. What do you think Margaret Thatcher would say? Or John Paul II would say? Or any of the recent great successful leaders of the world would say? They'd stand with him. Think they'd stand with Putin? No, nobody should stand with Putin. And I hear it said by the pacifists in our country. The pacifists who just, who just say, do you want to send your children? Uh, do you want to create World War III? Two of the stupidest questions you'll ever be asked. No, we don't want to send our children and we don't want to create World War III. But we're realists, we see what's taking place. You have to be prudential. Just because you want to avoid a conflict doesn't mean the other side wants to avoid a conflict. So how do we lessen the chance of a conflict? We arm up the Ukrainians with what, what they need. And we support efforts to take out Putin. Over 60% of the American people believe that to be the case, that he ought to be taken out. Not by us, but by others. Maybe, maybe a Wagner group, if you will. But on the Ukrainian side, I mean, after all, Putin's been trying to assassinate Zelensky now for years. Well, what's good for the goose is good for the fascist. So my comment to you is this. Please speak out. You don't want to look back in history and say, what did I say? What did I say when this was going on? We haven't even seen what they've done to the people of Maripol. That's a city of 400,000 people where hundreds of thousands are stuck there. They've been surrounded God only knows what's taking place there in these other major cities in Ukraine that have not yet been liberated and what's taking place in these cities. It's one thing to say that we want a war crimes tribunal. That occurs after the fact. 
In the meantime, people are being raped, tortured, dismembered, disemboweled, slaughtered, hanged, and God knows what else. And we're alive to watch it. I want to thank the organizations, most of them religious organizations and veterans organizations, that are doing everything humanly possible to help these people. Everything humanly possible to help the refugees, to get food and water to these people and putting their lives on the line. I cannot thank you enough. But what I'm hearing from some of these groups is that our government, the United States government, has very few people in Ukraine to assist in these efforts. Very few people. I don't want to hear any more that Joe Biden is some great leader. He's not leading anything. I don't want to hear any more that we're doing everything we can to help the Ukrainian people. We're not. This is our generation's genocide that's taking place. You look back at Rwanda. You look back at Cambodia. You look back at the Holocaust. You look back at the slaughter of the Ukrainians in 1932 and 1933. Our media were either silent or on the wrong side. I'm just proud to say that the vast majority of the American people know this to be a righteous confrontation with an evil man and an evil enemy. And they want us to do more. And we should do more. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.